Uh, I have been chomping at the bit to share my story um, because I am the guy to talk about technology addiction because of how immersed I was into it. And it is a big, vital part of my story. So thank you, Pastor Brandon, for um, allowing me to share my story. Uh, My wife, Justina, is over there. She is the middle school pastor um, at the Rock of Roseville. Uh, My parents are back there. Um, I am a, I work for a company called Pool Ninja, just a little bit about myself. And um, just to jump right into my story, I got saved in 2013. I was a senior in high school. My mom pretty much forced me to go on a Mexicali missions trip when I didn't want to go. And that trip changed my life. I got saved and I got healed and I got delivered. And when I got home, I had a radical transformation. I loved the Lord and I felt a calling to be um, an evangelist. So I was sharing the gospel. I was soaking in the word of God. And that was my life. It was a real transformation. And to jump into 2015, I felt like it was a great idea to pursue professional Call of Duty, uh, to be a professional Call of Duty player. Why? I was good enough. A lot of my friends were successful. And I was like, man, I wanna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a go. You know, a lot of people are experiencing success in this. And my calling as an evangelist, I was like, I'm going to go reach this unreached gaming community. And I meant it. So I, that year, I just immersed myself in Call of Duty and in gaming, spending minimum of four hours a day playing, usually like six to ten hours a day playing. You just got to practice and practice and practice in tournaments and tournaments. And I was playing with my teammates. I got a lot of time with them. It was cool. That year, something happened to me that I never thought could happen, nor did I ever think could happen to me, and that is I removed God from my life on accident, and I replaced him with technology, with gaming, with social media. It was an accident. I was not intending for that to happen. Um, And to give you some examples of how that happened, um, simply if I was sad, feeling down or whatever, I would turn to go I'd just go play video games, go have some fun, go laugh with my friends, and um, it would cover it up. Uh, if I was feeling worried, anxious, or had some sort of burden, um, it was much easier to turn on my PlayStation and go practice with my friends. And uh, there was something that it gaming offered me that God didn't, and it's called instant gratification. Um, and that is a real drug that our soul wants to be fulfilled. Our soul wants to be gratified. The scripture he shared was so powerful. He said, come to me if you're thirsty and rivers of living water will pour out from your belly. And that's what happened to me. I'm going to get there in a minute. But that, when you said that, it really touched me because that's so true. But gaming, it offered me instant gratification. Whether that's gaming, uh, TVs, or like the TV series, binge watching it, social media, I think that it is a really big problem in Christianity and our culture because it's not alcohol, it's not drugs, it's not these things that are so blatantly wrong, blatantly will destroy your life, it's technology, it, it can be used for good. So it goes under the radar and we allow it to be our instant gratification as opposed to you know going to God for those things. So after 11 months of living that way, I accidentally removed God from my life and I allowed this to replace it. It left me at a place of complete emptiness, uh, depression, uh, purposelessness. Uh, and I was very angry. I was like, what's going on? And I didn't succeed in being a professional Call of Duty player. Um, I was very uh, empty on the inside, obviously, because that ended up building up over time. And I hated how I felt. So I remember praying a prayer to God. I said, God, your word says that I am to have an abundant life. Uh, That is not what I have. Um, Please help me. Give me an abundant life. And I felt God immediately responded to my spirit and said, you're not surrendered to me. And so what I did was I just removed video games. I removed social media, anything. Those are the biggest two things that were distracting me. And I just read the word of God on my free time. I prayed. I sought the Lord, I hung out with family during that time a lot, and I uh, went to church, was hanging around good community, but I just, the main thing I did was remove these distractions from my life and, and sought God. Little did I know that would be the greatest decision of my Christian walk when I did that. After a few months goes by, uh, I go on another trip to Mexicali, Mexico, and uh, on one night during worship, 
I encountered the living presence of God more than I ever have in my entire life. Um, I was so overcome with joy that I was laughing. I was so overcome with love that I was weeping. Something was stirring on the inside of my belly. I didn't know how to explain it. And I was so overcome with the goodness and the presence of God. God baptized me in the Holy Spirit and fire that day. Leaving that encounter, I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I had no idea God could be so near. I had no idea God could be so fulfilling. I had no idea God offered this kind of joy. I had no idea God offered this kind of love to me and for people. It was, it was, it was unbelievable the amount of closeness I felt towards God. Leaving that trip, going home, there was immediate fruit. My time with God was rich. My time with God was often interrupted by his overwhelming presence. When I would go to work, God would tell me to pray for him. Pray for her. Tell him this. Tell him that. And people would encounter the presence of God at work. My friends were encountering the presence of God. And uh, all of a sudden, my life was abundant. All of a sudden, my life had meaning. My life had purpose. My life was, uh, I just didn't just have joy. My cup was overflowing. It was overwhelming. <laughs> My God, God led me through to read First John, and as my dad, I would often come out just weeping and saying, "God loves me so much. God loves you so much. God love. It was just God love, God love, God love." And I'm so overwhelmed with joy. I'm so overwhelmed with His presence. It was it was crazy, and so I say all that because after throughout that season, this is 2016. I said, God, this is the abundant life that you have for me. And I got it through Jesus, through seeking Jesus, seeking the word of God through prayer. And the one thing that got in the way of that through that entire year, the, the, the one thing technology accomplished in my life in the year of 2015 was it distracted me from the life that God had for me. It offered me instant gratification, but it left me completely void and empty. And so, just to wrap this up, uh, today I, I feel that just like me, some people who are watching this online and who are in this room um, have something to surrender to God. God's abundant life is for you, it's not just for me. He's ready to give it. It's a free gift to all. The thief, John 10 says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come, they may, they may have life and life abundantly. And just as he said uh, in John chapter 7, if any man come to me, if any man's thirsty, come and drink, and I will, uh, and rivers of living water will flow from your belly or flow from your heart. So thank you so much, Pastor Brandon, for allowing me to share my story.